it's Alex here. Welcome back to my channel. I wonder if you can guess what I've been making recently. Oh, well, that seemed like a good idea, but in fact it was boiling hot. Um, so yes, thank you very much to everybody who's um, come over. I've got lots of new subscribers since um, Tamlin gave me a bit of a shout out over at Sewn on the Time. So big thank you to Tamlin. I have uh, promised her a large G&T or several large GNTs as a bit of a thank you and um, yeah really appreciate all the lovely positive comments that I've had from people um, that have come over since then and I just thought before I uh, tell you what I've been up to recently I just thought I would also say um, it was really nice to have all the feedback on the skirt that I made on my last vlog um, that I wasn't sure about and also really encouraging that uh, it was fairly unanimous that my my instinct to get rid of that funny frilly bit down the side was right um so i have i did have a look at it and see if there was enough fabric in it to do something completely different but there wasn't really so i have whooped or whipped <laughs> doing it again uh whipped the side frill off um and i have sewn it i'm just waiting to have uh, the right color thread on my overlocker to finish it off um I'm still not 100% sure that I'm going to wear it, but I'm going to try and make the effort, so, because I like the fabric, so. Anyway, I mentioned at my at the end of the last vlog that my plan was to make a dog walking coat, and I think I've mentioned before that I've got two dogs, and I walk them, obviously, every day. Uh, here in Manchester, the weather is not always great, so in the winter time, we uh, can be absolutely soaked. I meet a friend at the same time every day so there's no kind of like oh well it's raining so we'll give it you know half an hour to hope it passes um, and we have been talking for some years about trying to find the holy grail of dog walking coats which has to be long amazing how few coats there are that are actually long um, so it has to be long cover as much of us as possible obviously it has to be waterproof and it has to have a hood, but a hood, not just any old hood, a hood that actually stays up uh, while you're walking, but doesn't obscure your face so much that you can't see what the dogs are up to. So um, I've been thinking for some time it would be nice to make one, but um, I was a bit put off by, uh, or daunted really, by the idea of using waterproof fabric, uh, because most of them are quite rubbery, um, a lot of the time you can't use pins and um, you can't iron it or press it in any way and also you've got to think about making sure that the seams don't let any water in as well so it was a bit daunted by that and it wasn't it was one of those things I kind of thought about doing but wasn't high up on the list until um, in the summer I was in my local Abacans. We have got a small-ish branch of Abacans uh, local to me here in Altrincham and there's a much bigger branch in Manchester. And um, if you don't know about Abacan, they are primar primarily based in the north of England, um, North Wales, the main branches in North Wales, but they're all across the north northwest. And although they do sell fabric on a roll, um, an awful lot of what they sell are um, remnants. They're quite big in length, or they can be. Um, and you sort of, it's very much, you know, you get what's there on the day. And I all, I mean, I'm in there so often. Um, so hello to everybody that works there. Um, but yeah, I often, if I'm in Altrincham, I always go and have a little look in there. And I'd spotted this waterproof fabric, which wasn't as rubbery as a lot of the waterproof fabrics are so um i bought it there was three meters and i think off the top of my head don't quote me on it but i think it came to about nine pounds so it wasn't too expensive and it was um yeah reasonable enough to to think i'll give it a go um actually i'm gonna go and get it to show you hold on okay so what i like about this fabric so it's um, blue and kind of flecked um, and it's like this on both sides and slightly darker on the inside but yeah it's like it on both sides so it hasn't got that sort of rubbery coating um, that a lot of waterproof fabrics have so that meant that there's a greater chance of me being able to use pins with it 
and um, yeah, I thought it would be worth investigating what it was like to, to work with it. So then I had a look at coat patterns, given my brief, and I came across the hoodie coat pattern from the assembly line. And I've made a few patterns from the assembly line before. They're a Swedish independent um, pattern company. And I, yeah, I really like their aesthetic. Um, the person that stocks the sewing patterns here in the UK is uh, Karen at the Draper's Daughter. So the sewing pattern looks like this. And as you can see, um, the thing I was really pleased with with this one was the hood because I thought there's a really good chance that that hood is going to stand up so that I can see the dogs but still talk to my friend. Um, and yeah, sure enough, that's exactly what it does. I found it to be a really, really good pattern. I have to say, I thoroughly enjoyed making this. Um, it was an absolute joy to make, it really was. However, it was helped by the fact that I did a little test first to see whether I could use pins on it. And um, yeah, that was absolutely no problem. So the pins um, were fine. I didn't use my sort of standard, bog standard dressmaking pins. I used um, some of the entomology pins, which are by Merchant and Mills, which are really fine ones. And usually I'd use those for silk um, or very, very fine fabrics. But actually they worked really well on this. Um, so yeah, I was happy with that. And I also found that I could press it. Now, that was with a fairly low heat on the iron. Obviously, I wasn't going to go melting it. Um, so, yeah, I thought, actually, this is going to really work well. And I did a little test to see just how waterproof the fabric was before I used it. In fact, my um, son uh, came home from school just as I was doing it. And he's um, 16 and six foot and thinks he's all grown up. But... He thoroughly enjoyed messing around with water on my fabric. So I did a little test to check it was um, it really was waterproof. And yes, it was. So yeah, it came together really well. What I did in order to make sure, um, or to, in the hopes that it would make sure that the seams would be waterproof, was I used a flat felled seam on all of it. So there was no overlocking or any of that. I flat felled everything and I did that by hand. I didn't use a foot. I found I've never quite managed to master a felled or felling foot and I find actually that it's just as easy to you know you sew the seam once you trim one side of the seam allowance down and then just to kind of do it manually as you sew um, I learned that trick many moons ago when I did my first shirt making uh, class on Craftsy and all the seams in, in that were flat felled and um, yeah, that taught me how to do that. And I've, I've always found that to be much easier than those foot, foots, feet. Um, maybe I'll crack it one day, but it seems to work really well. And I have subsequently been out in the rain. In fact, the very first day I wore it for dog walking, it was absolutely chucking it down. So it was a really good um, test and I had no problems at all. Well, I did have a tiny little bit of water that came in. I had a polar neck um, jumper on. I had a tiny bit of water that came in here. And I think that could be because the gap between the poppers um, is quite large. And I might uh, put extra poppers in in between each one. So there are just more of them just to keep it tighter. Um, but I think that's just a personal preference thing. So, yeah, overall, I'm really, really pleased with it. And the other thing about obviously using flat felled seams is this coat isn't lined. So again, you know, when you open it up, you can see everything inside. So it just looks a bit neater. And that's the only thing. Well, I've got two issues and they're nothing to do with the pattern at all. One is that ideally I would have made the coat a bit longer and I couldn't because I just didn't have enough fabric to do it. Um, and that was a bit frustrating. In, a perfect, in my perfect dog walking coat would be long enough that it slightly overlaps my wellies and um, I'm just a bit out so that's a bit, bit of a shame um, and the other thing is I really like this fabric so I found myself thinking one of my dogs is a lurcher 
but he's mostly grey. Gra- I mean, he's a rescue dog. We don't really know what he is. But he's got a lot of greyhound in him, so he's very skinny. And in the winter months, he does have to have a coat to keep warm. And it would have been brilliant to make a uh, matching coat for Dobby. Um, but unfortunately, I can't find any more of it. I'm hoping that Abercarm in Manchester might have some more of this. Um, so I might um, dash in and see if they've got any, because it'd be great to have a yeah, matching coat with the dog. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I'm really, really happy with this and I love the assembly line patterns. I think they're great. Um, you know, trans- no problem with the translation at all. Um, they certainly walk you through everything. And yeah, it was re- honestly, thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed making this coat. Oh, I'll tell you what, just before I go on, I'll just tell you what I'm wearing. This top, so I get all this blooming hair out of the way. This top is um, an itch to stitch top. And it's the, um, I think it's Busan um, top. I made it last year. You see the sleeves. Um, I made it last year just after Christmas when uh, my husband bought me a cover stitch machine for Christmas. So I was dying to use it. Um, so I was dying to do anything that was made of stretch. Um, and yeah, I really enjoyed making this. It's been a great um sort of a bit like an everyday basic really because really it's just a, a you know round neck top but um i just like it because the sleeve the shoulder detail is just gives it a little bit more interest um and it's not as a lot of these um state patterns with statement sleeves look great but actually when you wear them they're a bit of a pain because if you want to put a cardigan over it or you go out and you want to put a coat over it you know you've got a great big sort of billowing sleeve it's really uncomfortable so um i just find this to be a great sort of all-rounder you know this was just a uh, french terry that i bought from b m fabrics in leeds last year at the so up north meetup um which was the first sewing meetup i ever went on and there's the next one that is in a couple of weeks and i'm going to that as well so if anyone else is going let me come and say hello because it's really nice to meet sewing people um and yes so when i finished the coat i had a sort of odd bit of time where i knew i didn't have much time to get on with some sewing but i want i I fancied doing something so i had a little look at my stash to see what there was and i found this um plisse fabric that i'd bought from um leon's fabrics um again in the summer i think they had it in two or three different colors and it was um, pretty inexpensive. I can't remember how much it was. I think it was something like seven pounds a meter. And I just bought one meter of it. And I made myself this skirt. Um, I think, it, I mean, if it took me half an hour, I'd be surprised. Um, I literally just, I had some elastic. I quite like this elastic actually. It's, it is elastic, but it's got a bit of a velvety um, finish to it. So I literally just, um, took a piece of elastic around my waist measurement. I mean, look, it's not beautiful by any means. Um, and then luckily the pleats run on the cross grain. So I just cut the length off that I wanted and then just did one seam. I haven't even overlocked it. Um, and I haven't even hemmed it because it doesn't fray. And quite frankly, hemming this would be a bit of a mare. I mean, Who's going to notice that's not been hemmed? Um, so it's really, and actually, I quite like long skirts at this time of year. I like long skirts and chunky boots. That's about as girly as I get. Um, and I liked it. So I just thought I'd mention it because it was a real quick and quick and dirty sewing make. And in fact, um, there was enough left of the length that I made a second one for my daughter, which is slightly shorter, um, but. I mean, I'd say it's probably about knee length. So I've got two skirts out of one metre of fabric and, you know, you don't get better than that really, do you? And I've worn it two or three times since I made it. So it's, yeah, I'm really pleased with that. So I just thought I would come on and mention that. Um, I think I mentioned I've got this uh, faux suede Lady McElroy fabric from Minerva and I need to get going with that. I started it and I found a little bit of resistance 
sewing it on my sewing machine and I got a new sewing machine in the summer um, which is a faff and I don't have a Teflon foot for it which um, I did for my Janome and oh, I mean I could have just sewn the whole thing on my Janome but I love my new faff now um, so I ordered a Teflon foot which has now arrived so I think that that should make um, sewing the faux suede a little bit easier and uh, that's going to be my next thing. That and my mum has her birthday on the 1st of November and she has asked me to make her a nighty, and she's been quite specific. It's got to be cotton, it's got to be white, it's got to be sleeveless. And she said she wants one like you used to be able to get in M&S but no one sells anymore and I think I know what she means. Um, so I thought I would, I mean that's a fairly simple thing to make, I've got a pattern ready to go, um, but I thought I'd give pin tucking a bit of a go, so while I was um, ordering some sewing machine feet, I also ordered a pin tuck for, for my new, for my faff, and I'll give that a go, and um, yeah, that's the next couple of things lined up, so a bit of a break from coats. Hopefully the next thing will go nice and smoothly and then I'll be all reinvigorated. So that's me done for this time. Um, thank you very much again to all the new lovely subscribers. Um, if anyone's watching who hasn't subscribed, I'd really appreciate it if you would. And um, if you click the bell, that means you get notified when there's a new vlog. Um, and yeah, happy sewing everyone. And um, thank you very much. I'll see you soon. So before I go, <laughs> I'm luring him up here with cheese. Quite right, dogs. Good boy. I thought I'd show you my um, my Dobby. Dobby. Dobbs. No, of course he's not playing ball, is he?